going on everyone? Jax here, and today we've got the 2019 Toyota Camry XSE. And to say this car grew on me, that'd be putting it mildly. Take a look. Now, any conversation you have about this car has to start with the engine. This engine is absolutely ridiculous. It's a V6, 3.5 liters that makes over 300 horsepower. It's just a touch, but over 300 horsepower. And it completely characterizes the car. This car drives in a way that no other family sedan on the market does. The V6 pulls, especially as it nears its top end, redlining at almost 7,000 RPM, and it pulls relentlessly, and the power's always there. If you drop the hammer on this thing in traffic, it is hysterical how you can make the other cars around you disappear. People don't expect it. They see a Camry, albeit one with a fancy roof and a red interior and all that, but they still see a Camry. And the next thing you know, you disappear. You're gone. You're vaporware. You're a ghost. You're like Bruce Willis in The Sixth Sense. I'm working on it. Except you know you're going into the afterlife. This engine is crazy. And I love the fact that Toyota put it in this car with this styling. This is a Camry and I was driving around. I actually got multiple compliments on the way this thing looks. So let's take a look at some of the styling elements of this car because its design and its powertrain are by far some of its biggest strengths. So let's talk about this design. I think the Camry looks absolutely fantastic. There's a number of design cues that help to emphasize visual width, especially in the front of the car. The way the grille and the grille lines are all horizontal and the headlights come in really gives the Camry a sense of, of presence, in my opinion. It looks wide, it looks imposing, and having the roof blacked out and such an aggressive look on the C pillar really helps to lead your eye to the rear end of the car, where if you look at the rear of the car, the lights do the same thing as on the front. They emphasize the visual width and they have the lines running across rather than up and down. That makes the car look wide and planted and sitting confidently on the road. I also like the way the wheels look. The black wheels really complement the black roof. And Mrs. Jack said she thought the silver with the black accents looked great. I think the black mirror caps are also a nice touch. You see that on a lot of sporty, high-end, premium cars. And overall, it's a very cohesive package. Now, some people might say that the front end looks a little too busy, but I, I disagree. I think the front and looks really nice, especially with the headlights adding to the sort of overall aesthetic going on with the lines and stuff like that. It's a really cool look and it's completely unique and vastly superior to any Camry that has ever come before. This Camry is about changing perceptions. For decades, the Camry's been mocked for being vanilla, an appliance, a washing machine, a toaster, a microwave, a TV, an ottoman, a dining room chair. I'm, I'm really just listing appliances at this point. Dining room chairs aren't even really appliances. They're more like crafted up. Anyway, the Camry's been mocked for being sort of vanilla and boring and bland. And Toyota's taking risks here. And I think one of the things we should do as enthusiasts is sort of applaud automakers when they take risks. Now, I'm gonna criticize some things about the Camry, that's that's coming, there, there's, there's no doubt about it, no car is perfect, but I think we should celebrate when automakers take risks and they try to recognize the faults in their own design or their own past designs. These are the things that would have prevented General Motors and, and other giant corporations like that from having to take the bailouts back in the 2000s if they had recognized the flaws in their business plan and their design. And I think automakers like Toyota, who have been making cars that are a little bit more boring and are starting to show some real risk taking, I think we should celebrate that. The Camry looks awesome. This is a Camry and it's got a blood red interior. What's not to like about that? The new RAV4 looks fantastic. The Toyota Highlander that's coming out soon looks great. Toyota's on a roll, and we should celebrate the fact that they're making cars that appeal to people both in a practical and in an aesthetic visual sense. Obviously, the car's red interior drew a lot of attention, and I was complimented on the red interior multiple times. As far as the interior goes as a whole, it's nicely laid out, and there's a lot of thoughtful touches. The number one thing that you notice right off the bat is the interior of this car is mammoth. This car is 
huge inside. There is a ton of space in the back seat. Headroom is ridiculous, even with the gigantic sunroof. The trunk is enormous. You could easily pack a whole family vacation in this car for a week and not want for space if you were efficient. Overall, the interior is laid out well. The infotainment system works really well. I like the large buttons that return you, but you're sometimes reminded that the Camry's core demographic is still a little bit on the older side. The buttons and their fonts are very large. The screen is bright and placed high up on the dash where it's easily visible. All of the controls feel very deliberate like they were made for a newer, younger audience, but they don't want to ignore the fact that someone whose vision might not be as acute as it once was is driving this car. The other thing that has to be noted about this car is the interior quality. Where your hands touch in most places high up, the materials are nice, nicely grained, soft touch plastics and leather or faux leather. But there are some hard plastics down below and some that feel a little bit cheaper, like this little cubby by the driver's knee is just a hard plastic cubby, the bottom of the tunnel, and the plastic kind of surrounding the gear shift lever and some of that stuff, while smooth and sort of classy looking, is also hard touch. And you kind of question that decision in a car that costs almost $39,000. This car, as optioned, is nearly $39,000. And I think some of these hard touch plastics are a little beneath the price of a car that expensive. Now for $39,000, you do get some pretty awesome features. This car has radar cruise control, lane keep assist, the full complement of Toyota's safety equipment, such as rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, and one of the best features on a car that costs under $40,000 is you can get a surround view camera. So not only can you see what's in front and behind, you can get a top-down 360 view. Now it might not be quite as fancy as the ones in the Volkswagen group on makes such as Bentley and Lamborghini and Porsche where you get the sort of 3D rendering of the car. But I actually used the top-down camera with the 360 view just the other day. I went to Ella's volleyball match and I had to park the car in a very tight space where there was not much room between the car and the curb. This being a press car, I wanted to put it in a safe spot. So I used the top-down camera to get as close to the curb as possible to distance myself from the other vehicles. And all I had to do was press a button right here to cycle through the camera views. That is a super useful feature. And the Camry, as you'd expect, is full of simple, useful features just like that. Another thing that gets a little bit of a demerit is the steering wheel. It's highly functional with the buttons to control everything on it, but the buttons are a tad bit mushy and even though they work really well, the steering wheel itself doesn't feel especially special. It's just the same steering wheel you'd find in pretty much every Toyota product ever. Now I will say the leather on the steering wheel feels nice and feels a little bit above the grade of the leather on the seats, but overall it's not exactly a, a step up in the sportiness ladder when you consider what this car is sort of selling visually. Now I'm not trying to be like Doug DeMuro or anything right here, but I did want to show you that six foot six can fit behind six foot six in the Camry. The seats are scalloped in the back to allow a little bit of extra space in the knees. Not that anyone six foot six would ever sit behind someone who was six foot six. I mean, I don't think you would, but it is possible. One thing you might be able to tell though from this camera angle is the headroom. That glorious headroom in the front, despite the giant sunshade, is compromised in the back. And I literally cannot even lean back in this car. If the seat was forward, I might be able to slouch down a little bit, but if you're over about 6'2 or 6'3, headroom is gonna be definitely compromised for you if you're sitting in the back seat of this car. Why would you be sitting in the back seat of this car if you're six foot two? You're an adult. Get a car and ride in the front. Shame. So here we are inside of the Camry XSE, and right off the bat, the engine is absolutely hilarious. Just watch. And there we go. 300 horsepower and we're at super illegal speeds. It's just, it brings a smile to your face because it is so much 
fun. It, it seems ludicrous that this car should have this kind of power. My Corvette has 350 horsepower and this Camry has 300 horsepower. What kind of a world are we living in? I don't know, but it's a glorious one. So when you're driving the Camry, a couple things you notice, the steering's not bad actually. It's got some decent weight off center. Uh, I know I'm throwing my camera daughter, Ella, around a little bit. She's behind the camera. Say hello, Ella. Hi. She's enjoying this raucous ride in the Camry XSE, and by enjoying it, I mean not enjoying it at all. She would like to be anywhere else, wouldn't you? Yep. Thanks for nothing. So the steering has good weight off center. It, it has a surprising amount of feel considering it's relatively light. It is a Camry, but the steering's not bad. The brake pedal's a little mushy when you get into it, but it firms up as you press down. It has a nice pedal feel. It has a nice action, but then you get into the acceleration in sport mode. I have it in sport mode right now and it just rips right off the line. I mean, I just made that turn, and this car leaps forward. Um, I would say sport mode is the preferred transmission mapping, but I noticed that it's a little lazy. Going around a curve, ready? Ooh. There was understeer. It is not a Alfa Romeo. There is a decent amount of understeer, and you get a little protest from the tires, but it handles its bolt pretty well. This is a big car. So in sport mode, the transmission will accelerate a lot faster than it does in comfort mode, but it's still pretty lazy in the first couple of gears. I pulled away from a couple stops at part throttle and sport mode didn't kick down quickly enough. And then it overcompensated by really getting after it. So it, it accelerates the car more quickly, but it's not really sporty. It's just more reactive than it would be otherwise. To be honest, and I'm being perfectly honest here, as someone who enjoys cars, enjoys, dri enjoys driving, I left this car in comfort mode most of the time because it's not really a handling car. The suspension is way too floaty. We're going around a decent sharp turn right now and the car controls the roll well enough, but it's still it's up and down all the time. It's extremely comfortable. I don't think anybody would have any problem with this car in terms of comfort. It's a very comfortable car. But the up and down floaty motions for, for kind of snappy, aggressive handling, it, it's not really meant for that. You can tell that the car is doing the best it can to sort of keep up, but it's not exactly at home on a back road and imperfect pavement. Right there, pulling away slowly, the transmission does a good job of kind of easing into it, but the nice thing about sport mode is it's just a press away, and then it kicks down. Now, see that delay right there? I don't love that delay. I think the car is almost asking you, like, are you sure, are you really sure? Because there's 300 horsepower here, are you sure? And it's kind of like, fine, everything is okay, everything is fine. We're all good. We're fine, we're all fine here now, thank you. But it's not inherently sporty. I really like the comfort that the car provides, but I'm not about to take it up to the tail of the dragon and see what it can do. A couple other things that you notice when you're sitting in the cabin. The seats are comfortable, but they do not really hold you in place. They're roomy for someone my size. I'm a very above average size person but they don't hug you and around sharp curves. The seat bottom especially is very flat. It's meant more for comfort. It's not meant for handling. But you can tell where this car's priorities lie. It's definitely, it's definitely intended to kind of waft you along in comfort and convenience, not necessarily poke and prod you into doing more and more hoonish behavior. This car is a head-up display and head-up displays are very helpful. They're very convenient and they show you some information that you might need or be interested in where you don't have to look down at the gauges, which that's always a nice feature to have. But I think when it comes to driving the Camry, you have to be honest with yourself about what you want to get out of the Camry. Is this probably the best handling Camry in the history of Toyota Camrys? Yes. I did not drive early Camrys when, you know, I was like eight years old. But I think I could safely say that I cannot imagine a Camry out accelerating or out handling this particular Camry. Is it a good sports sedan? Not so much. Is it a very comfortable car that every once in a while you can stop on the accelerator and light speed transport yourself into the next dimension? Yes, it can do that. And I think that's a great compromise.
All right, we're gonna go down around the roundabout, and then we're gonna see if you can hear this engine, because I think this engine sounds pretty good, and it deserves to be heard. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, listen. That is 80 miles an hour really quickly. Now, you're wondering about torque steer. There is some torque steer, but like, does that surprise you? The car has 300 horsepower going through the front wheels. Yes, the wheel is gonna wriggle a little bit. I just honestly think that adds to the character of the car. If you were like, on a track, when I'm accelerating out of the corner, I don't want torque steer, it's a Camry. Shut your face, you're not on a track. When you're just driving around and you romp on the accelerator and there's some torque steer, it's fun. It makes me laugh, it makes this car a good time and I think that's the thing that surprises me most about this car it's a good time driving this car I didn't really think I would ever say that about a Camry but this car is fun it's enjoyable it puts a smile on your face is it for me I'd probably still take an Accord but I think Mrs. Jax would love driving this car if she would ever drive cars again for the rest of her life because she won't she'll only drive SUVs Modern cars have impressive safety features, and the Camry is no different. A couple times I've gotten the brake warning when a car in front of me has stopped suddenly, and even if I was ready, the Camry gave me a warning. One thing that's a little obnoxious is it gives you a pretty substantial chime, and it interrupts whatever you're doing at the time. So I was listening to music or a podcast, and it just cuts it off and starts beeping at you, even though I clearly saw the car in front of me slam on its brakes. But still, you know, I'd rather have that than not. I mean, people are terrible drivers and you want your car kind of helping you out. It's got surround view camera and it's got the parking sensors front and rear along with the cameras, which makes parking it a breeze. It's a fairly large car, so it's nice to be able to place it exactly where you want it in a parking space. And it's nice to know that you or your family is driving around in a car that's looking out for your best interests and is loaded with safety features. Now I'm going down a road that has a little bit of twists and turns on it and it has some pretty imperfect pavement. And right off the bat, you can feel the floatiness in the suspension. The power is not the problem. You've got power for days in this car. In fact, one thing that impresses me is that I am averaging 23 miles to the gallon and I have not been nice to this car. So 23 miles to the gallon with my foot to the floor on this V6, just for fun, just to make myself laugh randomly in commuting to school, that's pretty awesome not bad on the gas mileage. Now I would show you some more of the floaty suspension action, but unfortunately I'm behind somebody in a Tahoe who thinks this road is a parking lot. So on the back roads by where I live, the road is smooth but kind of wallowy. There's little crests and dips and the Camry tries to even them out with its comfortable suspension. If it was going to be, if the XSC model was going to be a more sporty handler, it really needs some type of firmer dampers or adaptive suspension because this suspension really kills the fun. In fact, when you're coming over the rise and your foot is on the gas and you're feeding the car all of that horsepower, it actually gets a little bit light in the front wheels. You can feel them wiggle because they, they don't have as good of contact with the road. And that's a bit disconcerting. Now, like I said before, if you were you know really interested in taking a car on a sporty handling adventure or to the track or something like that, you probably wouldn't be getting a Camry. But the only reason I mention that is because this Camry's wearing sporty clothes. When you look at it, it looks great. It's got blood red interior leather and a blacked out roof. Looks awesome. The styling of this car is excellent. So it's a little bit of a letdown that the suspension doesn't quite want to live up to the hype. <laughs> that just doesn't get old. God, it's like a locomotive, that engine. I do not think I've driven a family car with an engine like that. Corner. Ooh, I hear the tires a little bit on that one. Corner. Oh, there's the understeer. Ella's gonna puke on the camera. Bye. Overall, the Toyota Camry is a fantastic car. And I'll be the first to admit that it grew on me over the course of the week. When it first arrived and I took my first drive in it, I doubted whether or not I would like the car. I thought it was too soft, too floaty, 
and I didn't think that its positives would overcome the negatives of what I perceived to be the driving experience. But over the course of the week, I found that I was wrong that most of the time when I was just commuting to work and driving comfortably in traffic, the Camry was a helpful companion. It had the technology that I wanted, it had the comfort that I needed when I was stuck in traffic, and it had that glorious, hilarious, ridiculous V6 for those times when I felt like being a little bit of a jerk and just leaving the world behind. I'm not even kidding, I cannot overstate how much fun that V6 is in this car. And if you were trying to decide between the Camry and one of its dynamically superior rivals, such as the Honda Accord or the Mazda 6, you absolutely must drive the Camry because you might find that you prioritize some of the Camry's comfort and technology over the driving tactile experience and you get that V6. Now, objectively, sure, the Accord four cylinder is turbocharged and it is faster. And dynamically, the Accord is the superior car, but you owe it to yourself to check them both out. For me, the answer would be Accord, but for Mrs. Jax, I think the answer might be Toyota Camry. So you'd have to test them out and decide which one is right for you. At the end of the day, I applaud Toyota for taking this risk and pushing the Camry into new territory. With everybody jumping into small SUVs and abandoning traditional family sedans, it was a bold move that Toyota decided to go this route with the Camry. And why not? What do they have to lose? They have a full suite of small SUVs for people to choose from. Why not make your bread and butter sedan, America's best-selling sedan, a little bit more interesting and a little bit more flavorful? You've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. Fans of the Camry will still be fans of the Camry. And people like me, who maybe would have overlooked the Camry in the past, might give it a second glance, especially after a stomp on that accelerator pedal. If you like this video or the videos that I make on this channel, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm trying to make as much automotive and motorcycle themed content as I can, because I just want this to be a community for people who enjoy cars and motorcycles and want sort of unbiased, honest, straightforward reviews and talk. So comment down below. Let's have a conversation in the comments and ring the bell if you really did enjoy the video and you'd like to see future videos. I'm Jax, this is the Toyota Camry. I'll catch you in the next video. Ride safe, drive safe. Peace. I hate roundabouts. This is America. You don't need roundabouts. Also, it's like the minute I started rolling that clip, like all of the wildlife in the world descended upon me. I'm covered in biting flies and gnats. There is a arguing family of killdeer. If you don't know what a killdeer is, this is a killdeer. There's an arguing family of killdeer right over there. There's all the crickets and tree frogs in the world right over here. And I'm starting to think my isolated public park is free of people, but maybe I should be running like planet Earth or something. Next on Jack's planet Earth, killdeer fight in a field over supremacy at a public park. Tune in next week to see who wins and who dies.